we're gonna evade i might have to sleep to force the the battle to happen which is fine uh evade i also want to make sure that we sleep too to get rid of that for sila because that would be handy to not have to worry about do, do, do. we haven't slept back here yet have we because there is something missing from my inventory that you'll see in a minute. or you'll see it next time i sleep rather uh which is very disturbing okay um more people here wow actually there are a lot more people here uh let's go and talk to oh wow i don't think i've ever been able to see this before Ramian's face is deceptively serene it would be easy to think that the azamar has been lounging around but his rolled up sleeves and the traces of blood on his fingers reveal he barely stopped to catch his breath before going to help the injured oh it's you praise desna i said we would meet again uh i have to go okay i just more wanted to see oh my gosh there's a dog walking on the roof i love everything about that so peasant survivors this is really cool i've never taken the time to like walk around and see how this fills out i uh, show me your wares uh if you know who's who in the city you can tell me something about count aaron day uh, i'll tell you why not everyone knows the story you see but you could say that i'm the one who found it in a way the aaron days are a very wealthy and ancient line and they hail from the outlying area of canabras that's where the aaron day family seat is along with their ancestral land in the past if mendev was ever feuding with Sarkors or some clan from there was causing trouble, the Count and Countess were the ones who would defend the border. The main residence was called Heaven's Edge. It still stands to this day north of here on the road towards Dresden, but no one lives there now. Around 10 or so years ago, there was a grand celebration he held at the estate. The mother and the guardian of the current Count invited the Great and the Good to celebrate his birthday. The entire Arendae clan was there, as well as many other nobles, and then without warning, the demon struck. Clearly, they couldn't ignore such a perfect opportunity to cut down so many of Mendev's great dynasties in one fell swoop. There was even a chance that the queen herself would make an appearance, for she was related to the count as well. Well, when no news came from the estate, a troop of inquisitors was sent to investigate. They forced to open the gate to discover the manor full of corpses. They all perished. The servants, the guards, the guests, including some of Iomade's chosen clerics and paladins. The demons had unleashed a magical plague, terrifying and strange, the likes of which hadn't been seen before or since. And among all of this was young Darren Arendae, the only survivor. And the Count had a talent for divine magic since his youth, healing magic in particular, and that must be why he didn't die along with the rest. He couldn't explain how he survived the disease. I saw him that day when they brought him into the city pale and barely conscious of his surroundings, so that's the story. Since then, Heaven's Edge has stood abandoned and sealed off to the world. People are still afraid to go near the place. Huh. That's interesting. I've actually never talked to him about Baron before. That was something. Okay, let's get rid of this and this and this. I know I don't have anybody that can use this. Um, that might be better for land. Can I? I don't. Can I just? I just want one. Okay. Um. I I really do like it though. That like if you just talk to random people, sometimes you'll hear things that you're never gonna know any other way. And this is definitely one of those things. Okay. The quest to be filthy rich has begun. That will just no. Scrawny tiefling. Energetic tiefling. Any of them? Ah. Look who it is. The tiefling raises a hand in greeting. Who would have thought I'd end up in the crusades? Go figure. Did Arabeth accept you? With open arms. She knows exactly who I am and where I'm from, but she's come down with a convenient case of amnesia where I'm concerned. Who can blame her? The city's in a bad way. You don't turn down help in a situation like this, no matter what quarter it comes from. Wow, that's really cool, actually. <laughs> okay. I am... Wait, Kian, where are you? All right, there you are. He seems remarkably at ease. His face is untroubled as if life and the lives of everyone else in the tavern aren't hanging by a thread as he reads the dog-eared book and makes notes in the margins he notices you looks up from a page and gives you an amiable nod mm. what are you reading he closes the book and shows you the cover selected passages from the letters of saint uh Lemirin. it's amazing how humble she was she could have been a high priestess of the church of iomade if she'd wanted power was hers for the taking but clearly it wasn't a temptation for her Reading these letters, I understand why Omade made Lemirin one of her servants after she died. Interesting. I can't believe it's taken me uh, this long. 
Why can't I? This place has been sanctified. Okay, so that's that. I can't believe it's taken me this long to realize that I can basically talk to everybody beforehand. Like the different groups I've gathered. I don't know. Okay, there's Sila, Anevia. Let's talk to Irabeth. Thank you for saving the esteemed citizens of Canabras. Even though not all of them deserve to be saved, Iomade may forgive my words. She casts a meaningful look at Count Arende sitting at a nearby table. I don't really mean that, of course. I just never fail to be astounded by the way the good people seem to perish while the not-so-good prove to be incredibly amazingly enduring. Um, what's your problem with Darren? Is there bad blood between the two of you? Oh no, nothing like that. I think he dislikes all paladins equally, but the real question is, who does he like? Only his hangers on, I'd wager. He likes... Uh, well, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. The Count has a certain reputation. He's not a pleasant individual by any means, but he's not known for any particular villainy for any particular villainy either. The Count enjoys a life of leisure surrounded by a gaggle of sycophants who are always eager to badmark the Queen at his command. He likes setting scores too. Settling scores too. There was a hero of the, fifth cru the First Crusade, Sir Lant, a kind and honest man. After the end of his glorious career as a soldier, he became a wise mentor to the younger generation. He ran afoul of the Count somehow, perhaps by lecturing him about his idle lifestyle and lack of purpose. When Sir Lant died, the Count managed to buy a portion of his estate and ordered the knight's helmet to be forged into a chamber pot. Of course, he didn't keep his little joke private. The Queen was particularly affronted by it because Sir Lant used to be her most loyal comrade in arms. I was there receiving an assignment from Her Majesty and witnessed the exact moment she found out about the helmet's fate. It's a small thing, but I could see the Queen's anguish at the travesty that had been made of her friend's legacy. That's what our Count is like as a person. As for his talent for survival, do you know the story of Heaven's Edge? He was the only member of his family to escape while, with his life while the demons unleashed a magical plague. Um, why was he trying to provoke the Queen? Who knows? It could be a family matter. The Count is Her Majesty's cousin twice removed or something like that. I think he simply enjoys infuriating people. Crusaders and Iomade servants especially. Thank you for telling me. My pleasure. I'm sorry you had to endure my grumbling. Watching these things happen to my city has made put me a foul mood. I mean, I get it. Uh, Jana Aldori. Uh, I found her. Thank you. It's good to have her back. We need every fighter we can get. I suppose it's asking too much to want fighters that are sober as well. Um, the Tower of Estrad has been cleared of demons. Great. The places where the demons have gathered need to be cleared one by one. Then they won't be able to stab us in the back when we take Grey Garrison. Thank you for your service. Um... So, what is our main objective? You heard what the demon said. They're going to desecrate the ward stone and blow up the whole barrier around the world wound. That would be an even worse disaster than the world wound's expansion before the Second Crusade. Not only Canabras, but every city with a ward stone will be destroyed, including the capital. We can't allow that, no matter what. We'll retake it, even destroy it if we must. Iomade's gift must not be a weapon of the abyss. Okay. So, that's done, then. I'm just going to check my journal. So we've got that to do, which can be done at any point. The Burning City. Common Cause. I don't know who else can be recruited. Uh, Stray of Execution. Stolen Moon. Right, that's, well, just, that's gotta be done now. And this is a wait. This, I'm not really worried about. Like, we have Nenio. So whenever that happens, that happens kind of thing. Okay. Let's get some sleep and kind of get the... I'm going to quickly save just in case. But first, let me quickly dump a whole bunch of things in here. Because <laughs> you never know. I don't have a kineticist. That's fine. I'm going to hold on to that for now. What is this? A yellowed letter that can go in. Wait, I'm going to hold on to this. I don't know why, but I feel... Well... I never read it. Uh, water crumpled paper, visible bite. Carefully pack up all the relics. And may carve out some time away from research to sift through. Well, I wanna, I wanna read that, read that. Can I expand it? Info. Should I discover that the potions have mysteriously disappeared, I will not try to look for the culprit. I will punish the person who let it happen, the person who failed to her. Punishment will be painful, brutal, and inhumane. Remember this. So this is... So you can actually get kind of a read on Xanthir before it all happens. Interesting. Okay. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stay up to date on people's leveling. I'm um, normally like there's a, a handful of people who never actually get leveled because I don't use them. But I'm gonna try my best this time. I doubt I'm gonna. I, I doubt it's gonna happen. I had a messed up childhood, but sometimes I think back on it fondly. Uh, life was so easy. You were smaller, so it was easier for you to cut purses and get away without being caught. Am I right? Don't tell me. I know I'm right. Wow, Sila. What if he actually did mean that, though? That's the thing. I. Mm. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Oh, no. I hate when that happens. There we go. Demons. Demons galore. Look at all these demons. Demons were killed recently. Note about that. But it's not clear if it happened here, if the bodies were brought here from elsewhere. And is it here? Wait. No. It's got to be. Did I already get it? Wait, did I? Did I already get it and, and forget? Wait, really? Is it because I haven't flirted with him as much? That's interesting. Okay. That's something new. People say that you're deliberately trying Queen Galfrey's patience. Is that true? Does it even matter? All of Mendevian high society has declared war on me. They either despise me or they're trying to steer me back onto the right path, and I'm doing everything in my power to keep them on their toes. I relish the prospect of all the fun this mess in Canabras will bring. He grins from ear to ear. I shall either commission a song about the great Canabras fiasco from a certain talented bard, or confuse the jewelers with a rather tall order, a batch of silver dragon toys with detachable heads. Give me a week, they'll be in every shop in the capital. You should make sure it's easily to rip off the wings of your dragon trinket as well. Kids are going to love it. <laughs> Darren laughs. So be it. From now on, you are my muse. I'll talk to you later, Darren. Oh, that's actually really funny. Hey, Wolgif, is there anything else you want to talk about? I should really be better at talking to everybody, but there are some that are obviously just going to always be my favorites. Want to talk? Uh, want to know more about you. How much more is more? Uh, your shadow. It looks strange. What kind of magic is that? Ladies and gentlemen, roll up. Roll up. No dark magic, no fraud. A trick without any deception. Well, just snaps his fingers and a blue flame engulfs him. The shadow that was previously lying calmly at his feet grows floating in the air above him. It's the shadow of a huge horned winged demon with claws. Ta-da! It doesn't do anything. It just looks scary. I remember when I was little, an old beggar showed me and my friends how to make shadow puppets. Put your fingers together in front of a light. It makes the shadow a, de a deer or a dog or a dove on the wall. I tried so hard. I wanted to make the best shadow and I did. It just happened. <laughs> we'll just chuckle sadly. Funnily enough, that's the last time I had any real friends. They tried to stone me later, screaming at me, calling me a demon. A tiefling is always a demon to these wimps. Even the lowest ranking drunken gnome thinks he's better than me just because he hasn't gotten horns or a tail. The poorest beggar in the filthiest gutter thinks he's better than me. Most people would never show their shadow again after the first time, but I don't care. If the stones start flying again, I'll just run. I'm used to it. <sighs> like this, I hate the good line here. I honestly do. It's, it's harmless illusion. But you shouldn't show it to anyone. People hate what they don't understand. That's not Wolgif's fault. It's not Wolgif's fault that people hate what they don't understand. I do agree that there is a, like, that. that's just common. People either dislike or hate or are afraid of what they don't understand because they don't understand it. But Wolgif shouldn't change who Wolgif is because of that. He's Wolgif. He has a shadow, and that's fine. He can do things with it, and that's fine. He should be able to, sh you know, show it off without really fear his friend should never have left him he was still wolgif in the end it looks formidable i like it he chuckles pleased what about the blue fire that's my favorite part and it doesn't burn at all if i had a coin every time i've caught a beating for my little show here i'd already be proposing to galfrey but still i don't want to give up something so beautiful like and i i think he literally means it he thinks that it's beautiful i don't know i want to can you show me one more time Lady, okay, so there it is. So I was kind of curious. So it doesn't actually disappear here. 
Uh, all right. Oh, uh, you want to talk to us something else? I'll talk to you later. Whatever, you're free to do as you please. Well, Jeff, don't be like that. <laughs> okay. So I think the next part should be starting soon. Hopefully, if I have that right. If not, we'll go do other stuff. Like I'm kind of a f oh, entrapping longboat. You can have that. I'm gonna remove the bow from Ember, and she'll just get a spell to do. I think for now, I guess I'm thinking I'm just going to give her like Divine Zap or something like that. Is this buckler better than the one Sila has? So we're kind of just, I don't want to start the next thing. That has a negative. Never mind. Her current shield is, is not bad. I am also armor. This is currently medium six, negative three. Wait, hold on. I have a quick question. Is it? Negative two. Oh, they're all negative. Never mind. So yeah, actually, what is this other one, Sila? This that's a negative two. This is a zero, but and she, I lied. She's going with that. <laughs> that is better. Um so I've got a nine, a ne mm, no, that's still better. Uh six, five yeah, no, I think I'm gonna keep that on her. Camellia, I'm not worried about it. Well, Jeff, nothing here for you. That's fine. You don't need it. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Uh, Lan, nothing here for you either. Nothing here for Ember. Definitely nothing here for Nenio. Um, he's good. I don't know. Sorry for Darren for his class. Now I know to scroll down. I double. I want to double check. Danger can't first round of combat. Okay, so for warrant of danger, you can't act to prevent it. Your uncanny dodge as a rogue class feature. Your stack. Okay, so that's why. I wasn't really understanding why he was staggered the first round of combat every time. Now I do. Uh, as the rogue, you oracle of rogue. Okay. So he has that, but as a consequence. I mean, that's fine. There's nothing I can do about it. Unless I guess I technically changed his class, but that would be weird. Does what well, Wolf doesn't have anything extra? Interesting. Dangerous. Like Wolf's class is something. There's a lot there. A lot. Okay. So I think now we'll walk out the door and see what happens if we try to leave. Like I said, I don't want to try to go do Camellia's thing, but I don't mind starting Wolf's quest. So if we get started on Wilder's quest and then come like get told to come back, then we'll do that. Or we might walk out the front door and get told that the battle's starting. We'll see what happens. All right. So welcome back probably to me more than anybody else. But at this point, uh, I haven't recorded in a bit. And so we're back. However, what will probably have shown either in the last episode or just a few minutes prior to whatever you're watching is that the fight for Defender's Heart never triggered. So I'm going to go to the Thiefling hideout now. I don't really know what else to do at this point. So I'm going to kind of hope that it triggers on its own. Uh, but we can get this started because you can kind of like, yeah, like... I'm going to see if I fight this because I know I can evade stuff, but I think when they force the fight on you, you can't evade it. Like the defender's heart fight that is, but I, I'm kind of curious now um, if this is the, the case. I won't let you hurt my friends. So let's, let's see what happens and then go from there. I actually haven't played this game in a while. Uh, IRL got really busy, so I haven't had a chance and I'm very sad about that, which is why I'm super excited to be a... Uh, Replaying or just playing more. So nothing here. Okay. So we'll go this way and keep going. I guess that was really easy, actually. <laughs> oh, did I just get one of those? Scro oh no. See, scroll of fire belly. I've never used that. It kind of interests me though. I'm not gonna lie. That is one of those spells that I've never used, but it does. It does uh make me curious. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I guess the question is though, like I, I don't think because we handled the tower, I like get out of that fight, but it almost is feeling like it. That wouldn't make sense because it's still, it's still in 
um, my journal. So, we'll see what happens. We're here! Uh, the basement is dark and dank. <laughs> I don't know why, but whenever this game uses the word dank and word like dark and dank, I just giggle uncontrollably. Um, and you are immediately struck by the hostility of the gathered tieflings. Five of them are kneeling along the wall separate from the rest. The tall woman who had been cleaning her fingernails with the tip of her knife greets you with narrowed eyes. Brother Wolgif, you got my message then. Sorry, I couldn't swing by sooner, dear Sister Charisme. I was just, it was just one thing after another. First, I was in shackles. Next, well, no, I was still in shackles and I was being watched. And then the chief got me out and I came here straight away. Knew you'd be waiting on me. Hmm. Enough talking or else we'll be here all night. So, we had a clear plan. We were going to wait for nightfall, slip into the shop, grab the goods, and leave. Even if the neighbors called the guards, there was time to get away. But what happened? That bitch Irabeth showed up almost right away. She knew we'd be there. Somebody betrayed us, and I have a good idea who it was. What do you say? Make it quick. Uh, let's see. So, Wolgif, tell your side of the story. Tell them what happened. She turns to you. She speaks! I thought Wolgif only brought you so we'd have someone to hide behind if things went south. What's there to tell? About a week ago, Sister Charisme got six of us together in this very basement. Me and those five others over there, I mean. Well, just jerks her, his head towards those five thieflings kneeling by the wall. She rounded us up and says we got a big score. Ancient trees and wonders in the one place nobody's ever been able to hit. that The place that's guarded by a golem. But now a powerful, powerful scroll that would knock out the golem just happened to come into our possession. Along with a tip-off that the shop owner would be gone on a particular night. All six of us know a bit of magic, and we know that any enchanted junk will sell for a pretty penny, so we were in. that That's already just suspicious, though. So what, a scroll just, like, falls into your lap, and you just mysteriously get the date that the owner's gonna be gone, and you don't think something sketchy is up? Like, this is on Sister Charisme more than anybody else, because it's like, you are a thiefling. This is what you do. How do you not see it, you know? And the most important thing was that none of us was to be hanging about the shop ahead of the job. No casing out the place, no calling attention to ourselves from either the golem or its master. This job was top secret. That's all true. Go on. We did everything right with the locks and the golem. I picked the lock. I remember it clear as day. Sister Dalna was on the lookout. Brother Melrin had the scroll. Doffy, Tavy, and Varnier brought the sacks. We covered the windows, lit the torches. I remember scooping up rings and tossing them in a sack, and one of the right expensive ones rolled away from me. Crawled under a table after it, and the next thing I know, Arabeth was there. Everybody scampered, but I was still under the table. Not my finest moment. I was gonna wait it out, but then those blockheads were dragging me up on my tail and put me in shackles. They took all the rings off me, about 20,000 worth. And to add insult to injury, I never found the last one. In the end, I got busted over nothing. Hmm. So they caught you. Poor thing. Stripped you of all your loot. You didn't even manage to stash anything. Is, Charisme is pointedly polishing her knife. Where's the moon of the abyss, Brother Wolgif? Uh, why would Arabeth arrest her own inf- Well, <laughs> actually, we don't need to ask that question because we know why. I mean, it would be to add, like, basically plausible deniability slash, like, a cover for him. You would arrest your own informant and then let them go later, so then that way somebody wouldn't suspect them of being your informant kind of thing. Uh, go on, Wolgif. That's the whole story, sorry. Oh, that's the whole story, story. That's, I mean, both work. He crosses his arms, looking affronted. Some family this turned out to be. It's just a name in the end. In a real family, people take each other at their word. They don't throw around accusations. I didn't take the moon of the abyss. What am I going to do with it? You can't sell it to no crusaders. It's a special item. You can't wear it. It'll get nicked. It's pretty to look at, sure, but it ain't that pretty. If it's that important to you, Sister Kairos, may I'll find it, and I'll drag the trader here by his horns, just so you don't end up at the bottom of the selling. But do you know what you're going to owe me for that? An apology. Right here, in front of everyone. You're going to apologize loud and clear so everybody hears it. You'll say, sorry, Wolgif, you're a good guy, and I was wrong about you. 
Fine. You're one of my people, which is why I'm going to give you some time. If you run Brother Wolgif, the family will get you wherever you go. You'll spend the rest of your life looking over your shoulder, tossing and turning at night, fearing poison in every cup and every meal. You'll look into the eyes of every tiefling you meet, wondering if the family has come for you. You'll have no peace, but one day you'll be tired of running. You'll stop to catch your breath, and that's when we'll get you. Got it? You've got a way with words. A way that almost made me wet myself, but a way nonetheless. Let's go, Chief. We'll go and chat. To that scary gal, Irabeth. She knows you a little. We can ask her who ratted us out. I'll let you do the talking. You got it. You got it, Wolgif. I'm... Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! The only time I like lawful. The burden of proof lies on the accuser. Wolgif doesn't have to prove anything. In a single fluid motion, she adjusts the grip on her knife so that she's now holding it by the blade as if preparing to throw it. Burden of proof? Are you a city guard or something? I don't know how it is with your lot, but in the family, the highest rank is always right. And here, that's me. <sighs> Fine. We'll find your... Wait, the city is burning and you're squabbling here instead of fleeing the city? I'd be glad to leave like the rest of my brothers and sisters, but in the family, there's nothing worse than betrayal. And it's something we do not forgive. We don't forgive anyone who lets traitors off the hook either. If I don't find the rat, my superiors, let's just say, I'll wish I was burning in Canabras. I want to keep living, so I'm going to take a chance until I find out who the traitor is here. No one is leaving. All right, we'll go find him. And I'll get my apology. Onward. Root out the traitor. Be quick about it. Time's running out. I don't want to get chewed up by demons. Fine. I'll go find your coward traitor person. <sighs> Wasn't Wolgif. Ish. <laughs> All right. Let's go. <laughs> it wasn't Wolgif. Ish. All right. So, wait. Oh, okay. Right. I, can you... I wonder if you can just go back. Um, and, like, basically, like, if you already know. Because it just says, um, deduce the traitor's identity. Like, so find it out. But we're going to we're gonna play this out. But I am kind of curious. Like, if I just walked back in, could I just say... It was this person. I think I remember who uh, who done it. We're gonna evade, cause we're like here. <laughs>